Ancient Relux DLC. Again, this is another voiceover because there were many episodes recorded that did not have enough. Not not enough, that, that they just didn't get recorded properly. All the in-game audio was recorded, voice, not so much, so that's kind of sad. Anyway, I uh, forgot to mention or to bring up the fact that in the last episode we got two additional allies into the Federation, or two additional members, not allies, the Great Reherinari Union and the Lock and Mechanicus. We had dealings with them in the past, and interestingly, and, and, and I find this to be, but, but, I, I mean, I'm surprised because this is the first time that I've managed to build a Federation this large. That's not player-based, as in real humans. Um, not sure if, if it's because we have quite the, the muscle to flex, in this case, uh, but whichever it may be, it's it's still... I, I consider this to be good. Because we can we can wage wars or Boom. we can wage larger wars. We built something with uh, with our allies to the north. That, that's the thing that in order to, to push to the north, we need the help of our allies, the Rehernar Union. Construction complete. So I think the Rehernar are on the west. My bad. It's Luck and Mechanicus and the and the other ones. I can't keep forgetting their, their names. Um, which again are the ones that helped us start the war against the Finu and all that. So, uh, it's that and the fact that since we have nomads in the game, it's always my luck that I will have the nomads real close, like super close. And I've never liked that. Also, I, I don't know if you have noticed that in. And I think I mentioned this in previous episodes. The icon for the minerals was changed for the rare crystals one. I don't know why. It's probably an error. And we're gonna start building up on on the culture of corporate side. Colony the established. Side. High five. And also some upgrades. As I mentioned in the last episode, we need to find uh, ways to stabilize our. Well, it's not just the, the civilian products. It's everything, basically. And this planet, the one that we just colonized, I was noticing that there's no special districts to to boost it up. But even though it doesn't have any special districts for Dungar Prime, I think it is. Um, that's that that 25 size planet. That, that's gonna help us a lot. I, mean, I don't know why it took me so much time. Uh, this, I think this is the first time that I've ever gotten this this message for frantic changes. Oh no, wait, it's not the first time that I have this one, rather. It's about ethnic things changed in, in a planet that we're observing through aggressive observation. Uh, I usually do aggressive observation on a planets that are in steam engine or below. I don't do it in planets that are almost in, in pre-FTL or, or I want them to be an FTL civilization. Why? Because I don't know if that's gonna trigger a war. And we can do color filtration or technological enlightenment. I don't, I don't even know if we want to do it. Tech had better generate some revenue. Bad, but the thing is that since we already have a colonized planet over there, I I don't want to do that. I, mean, I don't want to lose that planet. I could always invade it. That's something that I could do, but that's gonna have uh, repercussions. But now that I think about it, I'm actually doing. To just drop one army. That, that's the beauty of it. You just build an army, just move it from the land they have there, drop it there, 
Or, or or anything outside of a research facility, like on a planet, will give you 10, 10 biological research. 10 biological research, I'm sorry. So, that stays like that. And, we're finally, finally, uh, jumping into help, help our allies. Also, atmospheric filtering. Yeah. There's, there's a lot of researches. I want to do blockers, but habitability lowers our um, amenities consumption. Boom! Uh, we need that. We right built now. something. We do need that because we're consuming way too many amenities. And that construction template, once it's finished, oh my god, that, fit, that extra fifty percent that it gives you to, to construction time—it's amazing. It's just incredible that you can lower your your construction time so much with that. I don't care about the amount of resources that I have to spend on that. That's that's fine, whatever. I don't care. The simple fact that it's get that it gets cut half the time. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Oh yes, here we are. Speculative hyperlink breaching. This allows the the research ships to do jumps through space. You may not remember this, or you may not have played this version of Stellaris, but originally when you played the, the very first version of Stellaris with no DLCs or anything when it just came out, there were three ways to travel around. One of them was through hyperlinks, the other one was through jumps. You needed a gate though. There was another one, I always forget that one. But the thing with that was that no one ever wanted to do hyperlinks. That was just stupid. Construction Honestly, complete! It was, it was just like, meh. Why? Another bleeding edge oh, technology discovered. Sharing is to considered. Oh, there we go. That's that's what we were waiting for. The, the synthetics crystal plant and the lithium crystal plant. See, I don't know. I, 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 again, I assume that this is because uh, rare crystals are being used a lot this part of the game, so by that assumption, I think that boats and exotic gases should also get an upgrade eventually. I don't know when that is going to happen, but I hope it happens soon. I'll come in Kansas or come in Morse and Filiac. See, that's another strange thing. I mean, most, if not all of the, the, the species that we found in the game, they were all very aggressive at the beginning. Very aggressive. And as time passed, the old became so feeling. I don't know why this happened. I don't know how this happens. It's an interesting twist. Because I thought that I was gonna be like on on, on the fence all the time. But well look at us, right? We currently have four allies. In our federation, we have one subsidiary. We're soon to have another subsidiary. So, no way, we don't have four allies. We have five allies. It's our friends to the south, to the west, and to the north. So, well, that's five. Boom! We built that's something. Five. I, I think that, as I mentioned previously, I think we span half or maybe a large chunk of the galaxy. I'm just, I'm probably one third. I could, I could honestly Construction say one third, especially complete. Especially after we are done with the with the Kalasan and, and their uh, their allies, that's gonna be no no, no questions asked. Boom! Them. We built we something. Dominant power. The only thing that surpasses us directly, us as an empire, would be the the ancient civilizations that Construction are complete. just sleeping. Boom! We built something. Yeah. So, as as we move, as we push forward, because this is the thing, we're 
trying to get as much territory now as possible. Um, as you can see, there are some. There are still some some, some systems that haven't taken by our, by, our, by the Kalos and, and their allies. But I think they're not they're not being weighted in on the um, on the war goals because no one has a claim on them. So even though they, they may be like, affecting us, it's it's not like push on the ticker. It's just like, oh yeah, you're you're doing your stuff, but that's not enough. Sucks sucks to be them right now. Really sucks to be them. But can can do <laughs> can they can do much to help their situation. I mean in the beginning of the war I did notice that all of our allies were just moving to the north and I'm like, oh my god, you should be doing that. Um but we we turn we turn that around. That's the thing. If if we can hold ourselves to the north, uh, our allies to the south should have no problem. Same thing for the west, which is another thing. We need to make a corridor, but I'm still a little bit afraid of the nomads as to what what they may do in the future. So we just start building up on on our fleets. See, right now we have 182. Another thing that I was that uh, it, it it's an interesting thing that um, Tomb Worlds always have this a lot of special events. Uh, this one's for for orbital debris. There's like satellites and a lot of crap that's just floating around the surface. That well, not floating on the surface. It's actually floating in the atmosphere. And unless you fix it, yeah, there's there's a Log plus updated. building cost. So, I like that, I like the fact that, for example, there's like, oh, there's an undetonated nuclear warhead, and if you don't, if you don't f uh, remove it quick, uh, then something's gonna happen, it's gonna explode, and then you're gonna have devastation and whatnot, so, th th those were, those were very interesting. Now, I, I did notice that there was a, there's now a relic world preference. I, I did find what a relic world is. Yeah, I don't know if that's good or bad. I don't know what, what events it has. I need to check on the events though. I'm very intrigued on that. Because it, it looks like it may be... It may, it may be an interesting thing to have. I, I mean, I did notice that usually when, it, when you start with it, there's like a lot of stuff just like around that you have to clear up. Otherwise, there's not many districts that you can use. But it's just like, th the way I understood it is that it's just like a huge monopolist, basically, that you can just take over and just build over it, and just continue to live in it. Kind of like that. that that's, that's the way I understood it. Also, another thing that, I, that I'm that i not worried about is just that I, I don't know why it just keeps growing up. It's the... Uh, the Federation fleet. I mean, that's fine. That that our allies keep building ships and whatnot, which is something that another me. bleeding edge technology there, discovered. It doesn't seem to be. It doesn't seem to be working very good. Yet. So if you want to build ships, it's just it, it kind of works and it kind of doesn't work if you don't reinforce it. I don't know. Now, for the next one, for the next research for biological or society rather, not biological. Um, gene tailoring is out of the question, we're, we're not going to do that. Adaptive bureaucracy, we should have done that a long time ago. Uh, the reason why we're taking it is because it's minus 20% on the cost of leaders and we're paying a lot for leaders. And right now anything that will save us resources, money or anything, is just, it's just, uh, I mean, we, we, need, we need that, period, we, we just need it. And at this point, I think we're also almost at the end of the war. I think we're almost at the end of the war, which is great. That's just that's just great because again, look at that 
2287 is when we started, it's 2296, that's almost 10 years of war. 10 years of unnecessary war. We, we do need to, to, again, we need to expand the fleet and work that out. So anyway, that's going to be this that for this episode. Thank you very much for tuning in. Remember, if you have comments or questions, leave them down in the comment section below. Like, share, and subscribe if you haven't done so. And also remember, there will be more episodes like this, very short, and we'll, we'll keep doing voiceovers over them. Because, again, unfortunately, this happened. But hey, let's, uh, let's the video is safe. Take care, and have a good one. Thank you.